three, two, one, go. Hey, there we go. We got it. We got it running. We got it working. It's it's in here. It, we in it to win it. Sorry, I had a little bit of a, a YouTube hiccup going on there. That was frustrating. But hey, we're here. Welcome back to Debate Hub. I am your host of the debate, the master of baits. And you may notice a couple different things. Um, the background in, for me is a little bit different, but my D&D stuff, the goblin, Bulbasaur, everything's there, everything survived. I move stuff around in my room, uh, and, you know, I, I'm trying to get more Puck in here. I'm trying to see if I can get him. Right now, he's in the bathroom, though. Why is he in the bathroom? I don't know. I don't have answers for you. Do I look like I'm somebody who knows anything about anything literally ever? Because I don't. You will notice, also, the Patreon and members have been updated, as it is the beginning of the month. If you are a member or a Patreon, you will get your name added to the scroll and thank you list. Greatly appreciated for helping support this. And we are back to find out about Madame Pele and found out that she uh, track her progress a little bit and what she is up to as it is her time of the month. Uh, as well, <laughs> keep in mind, we have a bunch of stuff going on on the channel. So if you are not subscribed, you're going to want to hit the bell because there is a ton coming this month. Oh, I have yeah. Sam from Role Playing and Role Playing coming on to talking about D&D uh, oh. &D and Dungeon Mastering, as well as I have uh, Tattoo and Bones coming on as well, the lovely Trevor Vale. So that is going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And then I also have some more debate stuff coming up. I've got Jeff Holiday and Egghead coming on to talk about guns. That'll be a good time. And if you're interested in Roe v. Wade stuff, if you're interested in more political discussion, and if you're interested in like medical care and what's going on with the carbon emission stuff going on, that will be tomorrow on the Unnamed Tavern, where bring your drinks because it's going to get silly. And last but definitely not least is... Obviously, Dump Feck Friday. So, now hey. with all the announcements out of the way, because, of course, I have a bajillion announcements. Landon, Manya, you're back. How are you? How have you been? And how are the volcanoes? I have been doing quite well. Um, I was looking forward to this one because I wanted to see um, what's going on uh, with the with the madam, with our Madam Pele. Because um, last time we checked, she was at a healthy temperament, if I'm not wrong. She was um, she was doing quite well, and uh, there weren't any warning signs with her. So this time we are gonna just sit and watch and see if there are any warning signs that we can look into and what to look into if you're looking into. So this will be awesome. Thank you for having me on. Here we go, Landon. Go go go. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone, latitude, and attitude towards Canada Day. Happy Canada Day. Yay. And if you don't know what Canada hey. is about, I recommend you watch the show that has everything apocryphal relating to Canada, South Park. Um, yes. 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 <laughs> so, so um, yes, we have a we have a, a good a good show today and um, uh, if you remember, I would I would recommend for those that that have not watched or may want a refresher to watch the original show we did on uh, volcanoes. Um, I'm not going to go over the, the, the details of, of some of stuff, but if you are confused about what the graphs and so I'm showing you and why they're important, I refer you to that previous show. Um, if you remember, one of the themes of the previous show was that volcanic eruptions are very, very, very common. They're not the sign of the apocalypse or so forth. Uh, to say a volcano is erupting is like saying it's raining someplace on planet Earth. In fact, run for the damn um, hills! Apocalypse is coming. If, if uh, I guess we can start uh, the, the the screen share, if that is a uh, if that is oh, uh, okay. oh yes yes we can, and we get the fancy way to do it. Hey. And special thanks to Bent Hoven for the stinger because ah, I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. So, so can you? My question is, can you see the uh, thing? Because my my uh, YouTube stream is, is delayed quite a bit. I it assume. is slightly to. You should be able to see it now, but it is slightly. Okay, there it is. Every, right. Everything is slightly to the right. There you go. There it is. All right. So, hey. so there are lots of volcanoes uh, erupting. This is a resource that you can look at. Um, they 
they they uh, they last updated on June fifth, um, but at that time there were forty seven volcanoes erupting on planet Earth. Right now there's fifty one. There are four more that came this month. In fact, if you look at the number of volcanoes that erupted in twenty twenty two so far, there's sixty three. There were seventy four last year. Um, you know, historically since uh, since nineteen sixty we've had three hundred thirty four, and since eighteen hundred five hundred thirty one volcanoes. So volcanoes are very common. And, and lots of them are erupting. Typically, the numbers are sometime between 40 and, and 60. Right now, we're about, about 51. Um, and so this is a nice uh, resource uh, here for, for, for things, um, things relating to, to the, 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 the volcano. Um, and one thing I have to do here, um, I'll, I'll point out, well, there's another resource talking about the ones that are, that the red dots that show uh, volcanoes actually actively erupting and you can click on the, the the volcano and get information about what's going on and things that are orange are about to erupt so lots and lots of volcanoes uh, uh, we are live in a very you live in a very uh eruptive planet um and so you why does it say which volcanoes have them which countries have the most volcanoes and it depends on you talking about ones that have erupted in historic times or erupted since 1800 or erupted since 1950. So the U.S. Um, would lead in historic times in terms of volcanoes. But if you talk about since 1950, um, Indonesia has a, has a lot. It's, it's a very, um, Indonesia has some, some pretty good volcanoes. Um, but, but one thing I want to point out here is Canada. Canada has had 24 volcanoes erupt in historic times and one since 1800. Um, and you might say, well, what is that about? Canada, volcanoes? Um, well, it turns out, yes, um, Canada does have volcanoes. Uh, in fact, it has over a dozen active volcanoes right now. Now, that's not erupting with stuff on it, but but volcanoes that have enough of a magma chain underneath that they could erupt and they rumble and they get steam stuff and, and so forth. Um, and in this, in, this, uh, in this set here of stuff, for example, one of them, is uh is is the wells gray uh, clearwater that had a eruption in 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 uh, 1550 um a lot of them are a lot of the kind of volcanoes are in british columbia um surprise, but they're surprise. also right around like rocky <laughs> imagine the rocky mountains the fault line there <laughs> yes figure Yes, it, it, it doesn't stop in, at, at, the, at the border. Um, it, it, the volcano, volcanic activity goes under Trudeau's ditch and, and goes uh, <laughs> like, either way. I like to think that people just think that at the end of the border between Canada and America, there's just a big ice wall that just prevents anything. Like, you have no clue. <laughs> yes, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll learn about that ice wall in, in South Park at some point. Um, so, 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 but, but, but anyway, it, it is, hey, it what's is that? A it's a wow. <laughs> what's, what, do have, what do you got? <laughs> and, <about> the stuff? <laughs> and, and, and so no, you know, see stuff, but, a lot of them, a lot of them are, are located far from civilization, which, which kind of, uh, this is, this is by a friend of mine that has a, a really good uh, uh, channel on volcanoes. Um, he does a lot of work in current eruptions of this volcano and that volcano. And so uh, for Canada Day, he did a, a volcano uh, in Canada. So although I might point out, located far from civilization, that implies that there's a lot of British Columbia that isn't civilized. And some might argue with that. Um, um, there's also the, 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 the Crow Lagoon, which also is, a, is another uh, nice uh, volcanic system in British Columbia. Um, um, Huda Mountain um, that's had uh, eruptions in 17, you know, 50 BC, um, E and, and uh, it's, but it's actually quite a, it's quite, this is quite seismically active, um, got lots of wiggles and so forth, even though the last um, lava has been there for a while. And probably the, the, the most, the most active one is in the um, Nook River uh, cones that's had eight eruptions in the last, um, 9,000 years, including the last one, which is in, in 1904. There was, an, there was actually a volcanic eruption in Canada in 1904. Now, um, no one really recorded it. Um, there was some Inuit that, 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 uh, that, that had a uh, notion there was stuff going on, but it was even far away from, from their, their, uh, their regions. And so it's got, it's got some nice, pretty, pretty, pretty uh, volcanic uh, systems in this in this area um 
also in uh, Milbik uh, Sound, um, there's there's a collection of, of volcanoes, probably the biggest cluster. Um, and this is like a volcano in this area. You can see these sort of blobs where there's lava that that, that came out. Um, this is in this this is where it is within um, within British Columbia. Here is the border of the United States, and so it's on this this section. This, again, this is a very seismic active region. Um, and if you look and in, zoom inside, you'll see that this this particular sound uh, Bill Bank Sound Group is actually um, has quite a number of them. And in fact, um, zooming in, you can see some of the volcanic uh, areas, active areas. Um, that in, and and this 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 includes a number of, of lava flows within this region. Now, the nearest um, place where there are people known is that there's a there's a small settlement about 70 kilometers from this. And so, um, this is the area that is most likely to erupt again, given its current activity. Uh, and so if it did, the, the, the settlement that's 70 kilometers away from here, um, wouldn't be in danger. They might get volcanic dusting, but again, it's, it's, it's in a very remote, uh, area because there's a lot of Canada that is not, that there's a lot of Canada that doesn't have many Canadians or first nations people at, at all. Um, a and so of, a lot of Canada tonight, that's just wildlife and no life <laughs> yes yes and and then I have before... a question sure no. I have yes. a question so the previous one the previous volcano that you were talking about where you said that I think so no one recorded the eruption not this one the uh yeah this, this one, one here, right yes. the no one recorded the uh eruption but um we somehow know that it erupted in 1904. How is that? Well, um, a couple of things we, we, we know from the actual lava flows. And, and I'll, I'll show you. That's a very good segment coming into the next uh, next segment, hey. which is that we, we, we learned about it and stumbled across this recent lava flow and said, wow, what is this? And then you started dating things and said, oh, it actually. And then looking back. There was some reports of, of, of smoke and ash in the area, and we figured out where it came from. So people knew something had happened in a region, um, and there were reports of people doing fur trapping and that sort of thing that reported some volcanic stuff, although they didn't know where. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of years later that we actually um, had reports of it. And and uh, and and it it so this is. And, and this is not uncommon, pretty, you know, usually under the ocean when you have subterranean volcanoes. Uh, sometimes they erupt and the only reason we might know is you know, hearing a sound propagating through the, through the waters or ships near the area might notice a bubbling in the ocean or, or, vol or seismic stuff. So it's not uh, uncommon for, sometimes for eruptions to go um, unnoticed. Today, we have a much better notion something might be happening, although maybe not what. But let's look at um, let's come back to look at this this business about the um, uh, about noting um, noting the set. So and for when, uh, um, for anybody who wants to watch that video, it is linked down below. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about Canadian geography and Canadian volcano, I, not even plural, just volcano <laughs> Canada volcano. Yes, <laughs> go ahead and hit that yeah. link below. Oh my, yeah. and I mean, Res just. Res just gifted everybody five memberships. So, because that's a thing YouTube can oh. do now. So there's going to be new membership stuff oh coming down goodness. the line. So look out for that. They're oh. uh, they're going the way of Twitch. So everybody get your pucks in the chat. Hey. Wow. Uh, oh, yes. It will take Res. a second. It's going it, to, it'll catch up. Give it a uno momento. Okay. So, so, um, I guess I'd say that, that we, so we often know about eruptions nowadays because of the act of, of, of monitoring of, 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 of uh, you know, seeing seismic activity, um, seeing ash plumes. Um, in the case, for example, of the volcano that erupted um, in, uh, in Polynesia, you know, we actually heard the sound waves circle the globe six times. Um, and wow. so we, but we may not know the details until later. But but we can talk about historic. So let me look. Let me just jump and look at this particular set. This is a bit of an eye chart. But what this is, um, this is a map um, of the Kilauea crater. And you look into it. What we're seeing is, and this map was was done in around 1980 something or other. Um, 
and and so it doesn't have the recent stuff. So it shows Hali Mao where the where the current thing is. It shows the old uh, pit, not the big sinkhole that it is now. And you can see in this in this region there are all these dates, and these are dates of various lava flows. Of, you know, 1954, here's, um, you know, July 74, here's 1959, um, September 74, lots and lots and lots of volcanoes. And we can tell based upon the aging of the rock and other details of, of how long ago it, it had. Now, in this particular area here, because of the volcanic observatory, we actually have records of all these eruptions. Um, but had we not had this been in a remote island, um, we could have pieced together the the tales of it. And you can see that many eruptions flow over to many other eruptions. Um, and so in the case of this, you can see, you know, there's stuff of here's 1790 and here's stuff from, from 1982 and 1921 and so forth. So, so at some point later on, the eruptions were seeing people will build maps and say, well, that was when it was back in 2022. Um, so this again shows you some of the details they can get as to what the flow is, how the how the volcanic uh, the the volcanic surface ages, the vegetation, so forth. We can pretty much tell from from dating almost to the point of the month as to uh, when it, when it occurred. So I mean, that's the answer to your question: is is um, they can actually date it back, and then if it's historic. Uh, then we can also get notions of people saying, oh yeah, we spelled something, we had ash here, blah, 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 and we can figure out, you might not know where, but then you can zoom in and, and, and find it. If there's so, there's like a question? lot more tools that exist now, and I, I would yeah. imagine that part yeah. of that has to do with just the interconnection of, not, not social media, obviously, but a, a version of that, or that connectivity of the ability to share information around the world, instantaneously yes. yes and so you look at this set here you know for example in hawaii uh since 1790 uh and some of the eruptions that occurred there and these various flows and then things that are 200 years ago 400 years ago 700 years ago i mean almost 10,000 years ago you can you can get lots of notions of, of the flows of various things so all these colors correspond to these various dates and they have all kinds of details about which flow it did and blah 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 so um, you know, Hawaii volcanoes tend to be one of the more this is, uh, this well is a studied. grade this is a grade six volcano project presentation, but like super advanced. Yes, yes. Hey, listen, if you're ever yes. doing a project and you're in grade like four or you're in grade twelve, look for these videos because they're gonna have everything you need to know and just copy everything Landon yep. says. Just word it a little bit differently so you don't get copper yeah. plagiarism. And just, or hey, if you're a teacher, show this video to your class. We only swear a little bit. It'll be yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, it, I is, give you is... for educational purposes. If you are a teacher and you want to use these videos in your classroom and you need to download it and bleep out my swearing, go for it. Take it. <laughs> Do yeah. it. Yeah, this is P PG, Pele Good. Um, uh levels mm -hmm. of, of of stuff so so that's that's the same now i'll give you also the link to this particular uh page here um we can add this, this later on this is this again i don't expect you to, to 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 look at this now just to just to know that that this is an example of how we can look at a volcano and see things see the history of what's where and when, it's funny when you when you when when eventually we get able to return back to this Kilauea crater and walk in it um, I enjoyed walking in there and looking at these kind of flows. You know, as a child, young child, um, my first exposure to volcanoes was in Alaskan Volcanic National Park in the 1960s. Um, where as a young kid, you know, I liked to go to the visitor center where they had movies about volcanoes. And one of the things that they did, since the lab's still interrupting, but, but, but in like 1970, 71, um, Kilauea was erupting. They would take pictures of those things and have that, um, and, and so I can come back to say, as a kid, I've watched this on the news, and then come back and actually see the, the, the eruption uh, flowing. We so encourage a, trips to Pele as a, as a local field trip. Yes, and, and, and I want to point out that, that, that you can, you know, th 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 this is a national park, and you can come into the visitor center um, you can stay even at the park. There's a lodge there or camping and, and you can come up to the very safe areas of the volcano and look down and see this thing happening right now. Um, it, it is, 
It is a, uh, the Pele tends to be a very mild volcano in terms of she's not cranky like some volcanoes can be. And um, it's amazing. You can actually get up and actively see things. Um, the daytime and the nighttime had some really glorious experiences. So let me go back on to the thing, talking about what's happening here. Um, a little bit other things that, that underneath um, Kilo Volcano is this rising plume from deeper in the mantle. And the plume sort of pushes up builds this sort of lump which turns into the shield volcano and the the lump has two kind of cracks where where stuff moves down one side or the other or comes out the top right now it's coming out at at, at the top and if you look at the the eruptions that are occurring um you know you'll see for example this is this is the example we'll start start again from the beginning of this animated gif here is the here is the beginning of the eruption um, or the end, end of the last eruption for three to six years where this lava starts pouring out mm -hmm. and came into this area and then it kind of stopped and restarted again and started pouring forward here. Um, it wiped out these, these uh, vac timeshare vacation homes and built this delta there. Um, it resulted in uh, 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 the, the change of the, of the volcano. So, so, so Kilo can be actually quite, quite active. Does the lava follow the same path you would expect water to follow, or does it does it do uh, things a little bit differently because of its uh, it, nature? It <laughs> often follows because that's the, that's the path of least resistance that the water channels um, can 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 guide the lava there. But 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 lava can quickly build up a lot of of of, of material and start overflowing the banks. Unlike a, a river flow where there's a flood where it might spread out, lava can build these giant tubes where it starts breaking out. And so you'll see that sometimes it doesn't quite flow along the, the river side. Like this, this business here, there's a fault line where it's easy for the magma to go down the line. And that's where it came out in a vengeance in this area. Um, there was a, there was a, the, the, one of the largest lakes here used to be this old shield volcano. And that lake was, you know, boiled away in a matter of minutes when the lava entered in it. There was, a, there, was a, there, was, there was a lake here. And so the people who are here, you know, a lot of timeshare stuff decided it was a case. But, but, the, but the native Hawaiians had been long gone. They, they, they cleared out pretty, pretty fast. Um, and so when you start looking at the thickness of lava here, it is like 50 meters thick. I mean, it, it becomes, that's about 150, 660 feet thick. From a, from a, from those that are metrically challenged, and um, <laughs> and when when it, when when you get fifty meter blob sitting in the in the in the water canyon, it overflows, right? So even though you see there's a river coming down here and starts down there, it quickly spreads out and starts you know putting land over So there, so in general, yes, very special about Landon's just lobbing of like just shade <laughs> and, and, and the imperial system. Yes. For those of you that are metrically challenged. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so so <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on, yes. I didn't mean to make this a, 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 a political system. Um <laughs> so we talked about about the, the what's happening right now. <clears throat> So this is a live screenshot this morning. Um, they do daily updates on what's happening. And we can see here that it talks about that the that since the um, uh, measurement started, um, there's you know, in in from um, there that that the that the crater floor has risen about 120 meters um, uh, since the beginning of the eruption that occurred. So this current eruption started in September 29th, 2021. And so the so the floor has risen up 120 meters. Um, that's almost 400 feet. Oh, wow. um, and it's put out 93 million cubic meters or 24 billion gallons of lava just since September 29th. Um, and and one of the things you can say is well, right now how 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 active is it? And you talk about we talked about deflation and inflation events there. So it's having number of events and right now another good thing is how much gas is coming out 1200 tons of sulfur dioxide per day is a is current rate as of june 29th um they they they, they do field measurements and so it's, sometimes it's lags but 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 we're seeing numbers between 3000 tons and 1200 tons um numbers go up lot. and down that 
that's giving you the that's tons of sulfur dioxide. How many washing um, machines is that in America? <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> depends upon you know depends on whether you're a single or double load. Um, and and so and so the uh, the the thing is that that this, that the the, the the volcanoes remain quite active. There's lots of gas coming out. Um, and and just so someone asks a question about you know, um, is the current climate crisis because of volcanoes like this? And the answer is no. Uh, humans' output of sulfur dioxide is about three orders of magnitude more than all the volcanoes combined. Now, um, is uh, the current uh, climate situation uh, reflected in volcanoes? Like, do we see more or less volcanic activity due to the current climate? Yeah, if, if, if you think about gases that are being put in the atmosphere that that um, trap trap in heat that that, that are that are, in, that are result, re, resulting in in um, uh, more a more energetic atmosphere as we're, we're forcing the climate into a more energetic state, um, uh, humans typically are about three orders of magnitude more than what all the volcanoes combined can do. Now, this isn't to say that on occasion you get a very big burst of volcanoes. Uh, like the like you know the the the, the Tonga uh, eruption had a big boom, but it turned out that because most of that eruption was under slightly underneath the water, it the, the 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 volcanic aerosols didn't get up into the air. They turned into sulfuric acid in the in the ocean, and so we had a very acidic ocean there, not a highly acidic uh, atmosphere. And so so far, we're not seeing the eruption in Tonga creating the kind of things that um, or things like like Krakatoa did um, in in the previous previous century it, it did put a lot of dust in it and so people in in places like Australia and New Zealand are seeing some very nice sunsets on occasion um, and so you're recording yeah. sort of purple sunsets where it's a combination of the red from reflection from some of the dust and then the blues I don't know Manu, have you seen some nice sunsets recently um yeah, I live on the west side, so maybe not, because people who are on the east side will see those more, isn't it? Because of um, yeah, yeah, the placement of the volcanoes and where the ash travels yeah. to and stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah. but when but, I was in Christchurch, is... I did. Go ahead. Yes, go Oops. ahead. Yeah, you're. Uh, no, go did ahead. Did I dox ahead. myself? <laughs> I when I I was in Christchurch. <laughs> That's when I um so I would go there for training and stuff. So um yeah, then we would see some pretty good um sunsets, beautiful sunsets and long days in which you the suns wouldn't set till nine thirty PM. So yeah. Sure. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's and part of that is 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 not dust like down where you're breathing, but dust in the very high you know, out way up in the stratosphere. Um something even higher than where, where airplanes might be able to fly. And those yeah, dust so, can can scatter both the reds and the greens, where you get sort of these purpley type type things that are quite beautiful. Yep. Who's even worried about yep. chemtrails? <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness! Now that being that being said, you know people in the, their output of gases that that force the climate in a more energetic state um, are typically you know two to three orders of magnitude more in in, in material, but. So anyway, back to back to Pele. So so Pele still has you know a reasonable amount. If if you if the eruption were winding down, we would start seeing these numbers drop down to the hundreds into the teens, and then kind of a uh, very little. Um, and at some point, they when they when they no longer are seeing size activity and and gas output, they'll declare the eruption over. But 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 so far, uh, Pele has shown no signs of stopping. Um, here, remember we talked about tilt meters and and deflation of radiation. Here, here is really last last month, and you can see these DI events. Remember, it deflates and inflates, deflates, inflates, deflates, inflates. Um, sometimes they're only a matter of like a half day. Sometimes this particular one occurred over over a couple of days. This deflation, remember, is where the magma that's near the top. Remember, we're talking about over here. Um, this 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 bulge that's sitting up near the top. That magma is um, considered the is, tip. Yes, the tip of the of the set. That that magma has put out lots of gas. 
remember we we're talking about over here, the amount of gas coming in, right? 1200 tons. So, so 1200 tons per day that day, but, but when that, when it kind of outgasses and gets kind of stale, um, the rock does what it does in gravity it wants to sink. And so the, the, the magma starts to sink down in and the, and the, even, even we'll see that, 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 they, that the, it's like a breathing that the, the, um, the volcano is inhaling and, and, and down, but, but, but if, if there's still a lot of energy coming up in the system, eventually that, that, that magma that's, that's falling will meet hot magma that's got more, more material underneath it and it'll turn over. And so as it falls down and then eventually it goes to inflation where the, where it flips over and the, and the, and the, and the, the, the magma, the dull gases comes up near the top where the pressure drops, it boils and it goes whoosh again. So, so this kind of breathing of the, of the inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, this is, this is a sign that there's energy coming into the system and you get some small ones, right? There's, this is a picture of short breath here, long, short, long, long. So this so, is, so I guess so we established last time that this was like kind of healthy volcanic activity. If that stopped yes. happening, those depressions stop, stopped happening, we would be like, okay, where is my energy getting released now? So is you would start thinking yeah. about where's the lava coming out? It might be, from, might be you know, in the chamber. That, that energy might be getting released right where you think it would be in the tip. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's <laughs> my dick jokes will not be ignored. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, 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 I will point out. By the way, I am I am currently having coffee, you know, Java, uh, from a uh, mug uh, that was from the hallway of the volcano oh, wow. observatory, where where this ash Ooh. is actually ash from Pele in there. So so I'm having an appropriate uh, uh, mug for the day. But anyway, wow. yes. So so at a, an end of the eruption, these di events have become less and less uh, frequent. They become erratic. And then not at all. Plus, the amount of, of, of sulfur dioxide coming out of the vents goes way down to the point where they hardly able to, to detect it. And um, and if it stays that way for a while, then they'll say, okay, the eruption has ended. But so far, there's no no sign of that. So so um, now this particular DI event occurred over several days. So that's a little bit unusual that it took a longer because normally they're about a half day. But hey, you know, Haley is busy, and some people say, well, this is kind of a DI event. <laughs> Um, there's a little day event there. So there's, it, it's, it's sometimes quite noisy to see what's, what's happening, particularly if there's sort of bubbles and, and so forth going on. Um, but, but again, so far, um, in this month, there's, there's Pele shows no signs of stopping. When we look at the, that the distance across the caldera, this is at that, at that top of the system, um, we see that the, the volcanoes continue to expand. So this is suggesting that there is material farther underneath that is pushing against the top of the mountain and the mountain is continuing to expand and stretch. In fact, if we look over the five year period, this was the, this drop occurred when all that magma went out to the end of the volcano where we saw those, those, those movies and, and flow out and, and, and the summit collapsed. That was the part of this collapse thing is that summit actually contracted quite a bit. This was a, a brief eruption in, in the uh, around, uh, started around Christmas time of 2020, last for, for a couple of months and stopped. And then this little blip here was the new current eruption. So the current eruption started here, but it's been going for a while. Um, and as you can see, it, 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 it's, it's slightly climbing. Um, so again, it's suggesting that this is a, this is a, um, uh, that there's still needs a plenty of energy, right? Coming underneath. You use these sort of indicators to say, there's stuff coming underneath, um, and, and the tilt's showing that it's still expanding, it's still breathing. Um, so looking farther on it, you know, if we look at, for example, what's happening in the map. Um, so there's a, they have a nice map page and here's a current map of the, of the volcano that's happening. And we can see here's the new Haldi Mau, Mau um, lava lake here. It's got cat that's, ears uh, pretty... at the top. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Um, I will point out by with these these little these little um, they come here these these little yellow spots are islands. So remember, this is the lava that's 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 on the on the floor, right? And and you know this is this is you know 106 hectares um, of, of area that has you know at, that that the creator 
floor has risen um, since the beginning of the current eruption, 129 meters. It's, it's really filled in some of the spots now. Um, it's This is the larger, this block here is a larger area within the caldera that, that, that dropped down when, when the, when that, when the thing collapsed, remember we, we, we showed over here with this big collapse here, this drop here is in fact, this sinking area where, oh. where, why did this sink? Why did this, this area sink? And again, look at the size scale right, in terms of your 300 meters. I mean, this is, this is, this lava lake is over a kilometer across the drop down blocks much, much bigger. Why did this large thing fall down? Why did this thing fall down? Well, that because, that was because, uh, all this stuff happening. That's all this material somewhere. coming out because basically that's the 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 the, the, the here's the summit top here. It moved down to the end and came out with a vengeance and and put over a cubic kilometer of lava came out in this spot. Um, that that was this drop that occurred at the end. Pele had been erupting continuously for 35 years and, and uh, it, it, it kind of stopped because it all whooshed out to the end and, and, the, and, the, and the, the lid caved in, right? And so this drop down block here used to be flat has a result of the basic, the, the floor caved in. Now it's filling back in. Right. Um, and, and, and so, um, but oddly these yellow things here um, are islands. Um, so this is actually as, as usually known as Gilligan's Island. It's an island that's been floating down. It, it very early on, this rock blob raft started floating in the in the in the in the lava, right? It's it's and and I guess the, the the we think it basically slid from the side. Some chunk of the side slid down into the lava. It it the cold rock hit the hot lava and flash sealed and basically built this raft. And there's this this island has been floating around inside the lake. Um, so how does it not um, melt? How does it just not get consumed well, by the lava? The very good question, and the best we can tell is that rock is a really good insulator. If you've ever been in oh, okay. a uh, mm. wine cave underneath where it remains very very cold, cool. Damn it, um, land, and it would be a wine cave. I'm sorry. What is a wine cave? Is it a well, cave of wine? Well, people that take and store casks of wine underneath the ground to for long oh, term, wow. try to get very temperature stable stuff, as opposed to all the hot, cold stuff on the top. Right? That's one of the reasons why people have these have wine cellars. They used the older days. But... Have you been to a wine cave? Do you own a wine cave? I own a wine you... cellar, but that's a that's a that's a that's a a refrigerated artificial refrigerated thing but yeah. but if you're talking about you you can go to places that are you know have historic wine stuff and they'll actually have caves where they store the the wine down there because it's, so very, it's very like when i cool. take my screen off in the winter when there's enough snow and i store my beer in the snow that's yeah. built up at the window <laughs> new zealand has lots of lots of volcanoes lots of lava tubes if you go down to those lava tubes you can find places where there actually are it's cold enough there's ice in the lava tube again obviously when it's stinking Landon's volcano. out here um, renting we're... space in a wine cave somewhere <laughs> to store his <laughs> really Damn. good wine so so anyway so so these these little uh uh is, it, is it one of these this is one of these features of these lava things and we, we we're, we're kind of we're kind of puzzled by the fact that that the lava actually was able to um that the, that the, that the lava was didn't melt it right as you said why didn't the why didn't these why didn't these rocks melt? But but part of it is that we're also talking about the rock foam on the top, where there's lots of of you know this pumice and there's lots of gas, lots of insulation, and and it, it, physics really does work. I mean, I have walked on top of a lava flow where the you know the the if if I had reached down in a crack, I could have touched lava with my my you know with my fingers having my elbow yeah, at ground level, right? I mean, just, just a small amount of rock, which will hold you quite well because, because lava is very dense and you're quite light. So you're floating on a raft and you can bounce up and down on a block of rock and it kind of gets springy, kind of like a chair. Um, you can tell it's kind of squishy underneath, but- it, Oh my it God, instead of a beanbag chair, it's a lava chair. Instead of a <laughs> no, water I... bed, it's a lava bed and it's all nice and heated and it's like gushy yeah. and don't tell oh, the flat earthers yeah. it's all about density, all right? <laughs> yeah. So, so this, purple, 
dashed area here is is sort of the extent of the 21 2021 uh lava eruption right but it but but the lake there's a lot of lava that comes in underneath the lake and sort of pushes at the top um the red part here is where it's actually poked a hole it's coming out on the top on the lake oh. um that's 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 part of the set here but 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 a lot of the lake is going like a blister right remember when lava comes in contact with the Zip. with the air it freezes unless it's flowing actively it, it it goes from the red to the frozen state so you get a little pond scum so a lot of this lake here is 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 has sort of this this this, this crusty seal on the top um <laughs> it's more like a pudding right with a with that little crust that forms on the top of the pudding that um, bed is and then that these... bed and that crust has got to be about as hot as my showers if it's not burning <laughs> yeah. me i'm not interested <laughs> yep so, and the tea so the it's overflow, not burning your throat, no point. Mm -hmm. So the overflows are 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 going pretty pretty good. But again, um it's it's a it's so this continues to 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 rise slowly. And the question is how far can it rise? Well, um, you know, at one point the crater floor is up here, it might be able to when it goes just a little more, it'll start flowing into here. Um, but at some point remember there 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 if you head down this direction through that crater and down those cracks at some point you're going to re-enter the lava is going to be able to melt in and re-enter the tubes that send it either to the far east um or to the to the southwest and so will this point lake us. eventually rise to the point where it flows over here yes but but perhaps some point the the lava will melt and 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 find a tube and start pouring down the side or underneath but we'll see that when we when we we'll see that if that happens we'll begin to see that through a number of means we're gonna have one of these um, episodes what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to show landon the clip of avatar roku about battling the volcano in that episode of avatar the last airbender and we're gonna see what they got yeah. right and what they got wrong about like the activity that that is displayed yeah. by the volcano because that would be really cool yeah Yep. So here's an example when when the, the current eruption that started on September 29th, this was in the oh. morning before the eruption started. Landon, you want to zoom that in a little bit for us? Okay, thank you. Oh, gorgeous. Um, here is a, to show, so, so you can see in there the, the current, you know, again, this is this is the Hale Mau Mau crater and the drop down block, you can see how kind of kind of depressed and there is a lake. And this was before the current eruption started. And then the current eruption kind of came through and, and flooded the lake. Ooh. There you can see Gilligan's this Island so pretty clear. Cool. Right? This is so and that cool. Was, like, uh, that was on. Slide back and forth. Oh, my goodness. The slider. Right? Yeah. Right. And so, so it shows, yeah. you, shows you what you know, the difference out there. But, but that shows you how Gilligan's Island really stands out. Um, so, so it had been silent for a couple of months and then restarted again um and 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 so the lava quickly filled but you notice notice how far down the lake is from from the top right yeah right? um so so now we go back to the map where the map here now it's it's up pretty close to the edge right because it has it has risen over 130 meters since since this particular um uh, where is it back here since this this thing started I mean this was the this was before the eruption started current eruption started and there's when it first started there the, the, this first spreading over the surface there's not because because the lava underneath there is it was 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 pre it was was hardening so the new lava filled the the crater and 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 this gap between here you see the tops up here it's risen to the point where now it's up near the rim um, from from this set and 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 as we can see from these deflation deflation events that are occurring here right she's pretty active she's still got lots of 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 magma turnover this is again the blood chamber underneath turning over in a new surge is coming out and we see the amount of sulfur coming out is is still a pretty good flow so so she's not and it, you know not not ready to stop soon but She'll do what she wants to do. So let's look at some other stuff here. Um, there's some pretty, like pretty, pretty beautiful stuff. Like for example, um, 
here is a case of a call of a a a we want to show you the the the, the summit lake growth right um this is this is on on june you know since since the start of september 2021 this is a, a, a an infrared a movie from september 21 to june 2022 so you see how it risk rose up there and then da, 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 more 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 little spots over here here and there here and there again watch it again so it first starts off floods the area and, and you can see how it's and it's, it's rising up, up. yes bulging and yeah. pushing and and pushing up gilligan's island along with it it looks um, like a really zoomed in muffin <laughs> yes <laughs> and some Not ways because you stop. see there's kind of the beginning right. of it right and and we go here to here it starts flowing out but remember because at the bottom is pretty crafty so it has to flow on the top and then it just keeps you know keeps flowing and flowing and and, and you see these little edges there where, where it might come underneath the, the the craft and come out on the side as it begins to fill 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 um so people that work in the field um you know that, that, that are part of usgs go in there to establish instruments put a lot of, of instrumentations a lot of field work goes into monitoring what the volcano is doing um putting in sensors into the ground um measuring gas sensors and other material um looking at groundwater and so they build these little spots where again we we try to put measures in there we work with the hawaiian community to try to make sure they understand why these sensors are going in what they're doing and in fact all the data is public so we also help them understand and so you go onto the web and see the data and you can make your own decisions whether to stay or, or go i'll tell you the, the 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 Native Hawaiians were pretty keen on when you know Pele started having that big pouring out um, to the very east end of the island in 2008. They 2018. They were gone. They were they were they saw the signs and said, yeah. "We're out of here. We'll Later. let them do our magic." And so, with these sort of things, these sort of things, we we share with them what we're doing and why and the data and they make decisions as to where they want to stay or, or go. It's so, certainly so like a good. trope in in movies, uh, particular or in media, that you'll ha get like the natives that live there or the old guy that's been living there for so, so long. And he's just like, nah, no way, never. I'm not going anywhere. I was born here and I'll die here. When in reality, it's usually the opposite. It's the yeah. stubborn people that don't live there. They're like, no, 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 we know what's going on. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back yeah, in, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a couple I, yeah, it's the, it's the people who have the timeshare that come come in and, and do stuff. I, I, I well, remember. Just take advice from Ben Shapiro. You know the, the lava <laughs> flowing. You can just sell the just sell it. It'll be fine. What? Did you not hear that? No. Oh God, year no. like a year or two ago when they were talking, he was doing some kind of press thing or some kind of talk thing, and Ben Shapiro had said because people were talking mm -hmm. about the uh rising of the ocean level mm -hmm. and talking about people who own condos or whatever along in florida yeah. saying that they're going to be underwater and he's like oh you can just sell it <laughs> everybody was like to mer people what are you talking <laughs> we'll yeah. buy so, a piece so of property that's going to get demolished in the future oh my or goodness is literally at that point underwater already because that's when he was talking about but sorry landon go oh, on no nah, he's gonna sell it to he's gonna sell it to jason momoa because he's aquaman you know and to and to other yeah. and Lansian. can't sell it to amber her she gonna be broke so so with this pretty thing this was you know the may um you know the, the may the end of the may eruption 2018 when when it was you know coming out and i was i went um i'll, I'll show you, you know, when back here so i was we were stationed we went and stationed around here into this um estate area right and and it was about it was about when the lava was, was flowing out. Um, let's see. Wait for it. Kind of it came and zoomed down here. Da 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 da. Uh, and it was right about there, right? That we put sensors in front. When when you want to look at understand what the nature of the lava is coming out and where it's boiling, and so you put instruments in front of the lava flow, and have them send out wirelessly the data until they get consumed, and. And so you land by helicopter down here, 
Um, you have people monitoring the volcano, monitoring the, the quakes, making sure it's safe. You have three different escape routes. You have a second uh, helicopter there on standby just in case. And, and, and part of the protocol when you're in front of a lava flow, you know, there's, there's, there's a team lead and someone on, on, on a, a mirror communication that said, that'll say uh, things, give you direction to where to go. And one of them, one of the commands is, 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 is drop and leave, right? Um, it literally says, take it or you have, drop it on the ground and go back to the spot because we're leaving right now. Yeah. And so we got a drop and leave because the lava was coming around around the side. Um, and one of the one of the protocols then is you count the people to make sure that the people coming on the helicopter are the number of people that, that left. And just in case there's a count thing, you then do an infrared scan across because maybe you miscounted and you don't want to leave someone behind. And so we did an infrared scan and over in this area here, we saw somebody they originally, initially, it looked like the person was peeing, um, urinating in their backyard, getting out for it. But it turned out they had a fire hose. They had uh, a, that was a hole. Uh, and, and that wasn't too far away. So we, it was like behind a tree. So we went over there and said, um, Bro. I, the, the, the thing that said, what are you doing? And it says, well, I'm, I'm going to stop the flow. Right? The, the, the lava was kind of on the previous neighbor's house coming his way. And he had his hose out there to kind of hose it down, right? He's going to stop the flow because, because you know, brilliant. And, <laughs> and I remember, I, I I walked up to him because we had a the the, the call was, uh, and then the call came over and said uh, three hours and forty three minutes and forty five seconds to take off, which means that's how much time you have to get to the helicopter. And so I said, you know, um, I I told him I said. If you stay here, you will die. No, no, no. I'll hose it down. I said, the ocean doesn't stop, Pele. What makes you think this this hose is going to do that? If you, I got it in the face and said, if you stay here, you will die. I'm going to make sure he got. And said, well, no, I'll I'll take my chance. Okay. I turned on and walked, and he could see the lava coming his way, and we're heading toward the helicopter. And I guess something got into him, and he. You know, as the helicopter was getting ready to lift off, he came running there to jump in. Um, we we flew over his house to I watch the lava as they burn it away and so forth. So again, it was like he wanted to save his fraction of the timeshare. Um, <laughs> um, there 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 are there are some Hawaiian terms which are not polite about those kind of people. But uh, hold <laughs> on, I got I got one, um, I got one, I got one. This guy is unfucking believable. But but that was a that was an effective thing of getting in front of his face and saying if you stay here you will die right in front of his face and he 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 didn't he left and uh, I mean he he probably was about a minute from being consumed by lava so, and he and wow. it pissed off because it put us in danger trying to get this dude out we would have been out there well you got and, and if, in danger twice because the first time when yeah. you went out to go get him and the second time when he was rushing to get back to get on and you guys are holding there for him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but but the protocol was, you know, he was about five seconds from being left behind. Again, when the pilot takes off and they're going, they don't sit there and have all thermal events and have the salt oxide coming into the rotor and so forth. I mean, they would have left his ass behind if he'd have been five seconds late. Uh, we, are, we would not have been safer and go and pick us up. We are almost at the one hour mark. I want to okay. know how everybody's a feeling because I tend to like to give the audience like a quick thought, like quick two minutes. How do you guys feel? I can give you just a few more pictures. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, by by see. that I mean let them go pee. Ah. Do you want to go? Do, I I I went do before. We want, but... Do we want to let the audience go because they don't know? Or do they suffer? Yeah, I, I, I guess number one, if you need to go number one, number two, if you need to go number two, or number three, if you are a, a bot in or and and have digital output. Vote in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Number one, number two, or number three. <laughs> bio, I hear bio break. So, so yeah. Uh, they promise not to talk about volcanoes when we do the bio break. 
All right, all right. We'll do a bio break. break. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll see if the uh, the Bait Hub logo actually right. stays up this time because I might have actually fixed it. So we'll see. Wish me luck. Ooh. All right. <laughs> All right, I'll do a bio break. Same. And we are back, hi guys. We made it. Everybody made it back safe and sound. Sadly, Puck <laughs> is now hiding in the bathroom because it is currently oh. well. It's Canada Day, and it's Friday, and the fireworks are starting. And I mean, it's still pretty. You can see the window. It's still pretty bright out there, but they're doing their test fireworks and stuff. So he hates fireworks. So he's currently poor Puck is hiding in the uh, in the bathroom. But you know, he'll, he'll be up. Yeah. It'll be all right. We had uh, the we're, we're, we have this nice 100 degree view of the Canadian Cascades and Abbotsford over to uh, Vancouver, and they they say that we should see somewhere between two to three dozen fireworks shows um, oh, wow. tonight. And and part of also is Americans doing the early Fourth of July and Canadians. They also will do a bunch of, of Fourth of July stuff too. So it's kind of a, it's a generalized um, you know blow stuff up day. <laughs> There's actually been talks about uh, banning and uh, lessening the fireworks so that way they're are more regulated. They're already more regulated in Canada. There's been word about, depending on the city you live in, like local governments, this isn't a federal or a provincial thing, just local governments mm -hmm. uh, making decisions to lessen the amount of fireworks. Yeah, I'm, I'm amazed at the number of places that have it, if they're assuming they're regulated. I don't know if they, if they are. But we sort of had this this view of, of noting where where stuff is on in terms of angles and I mean some of it is probably private, some of it is, is little towns and so forth doing. You can thing. tell so, when a professional's done it versus not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's true. So where were we? Well, we were about ready to show you a um, a summit collapse or, or a, a collapse that fell of stuff falling into the lake um, that occurred on, on June fifteenth. Very um, cool. By the class we're talking about about this edge. So here, if you if you're back, we're back to this spot. Um, we'll 
span it a bit, um, and let's watch this little movie here. So there's watch on the edge over here. You see that the, 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 the lake sort of boiling, lava lake sort of boiling away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden and was, you know, a bunch of stuff falls in. See it falls in on the side. And some rocks wow. tumble into the thing and and creates this little wave that then goes across the lake. This like this little lava tsunami. Oh wow. Oh Manya, you're not muted in Discord. You accidentally turned your uh, mic on. My bad. Sorry. And so the desert we're seeing is we're seeing about 30 meters across this little section here. Wow. That's amazing. So, so, so that's, again, this little section here, you see it falls in, rock falls in. Yeah, it goes and the rock falls in. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 mm -hmm. and basically disturbs all the bubbles in it and all the, basically, you know, it's, it's like a pot, you know, pot of pasta boiling and you go stir it up and it goes whoosh. Um, and you can see the, the wave. Uh, going across the, the the pond so vulnerable blade wants to know if landon you know who harry r truman is i don't know who that is he, yes he he was a very cranky person that shot buckshot at me what? rock salt actually rock salt and huh? because he he believed that when we were there trying to understand what mount saint was doing he thought we were there to take him off to uh you know, we we're a government people taking him off to a to a, 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 a rest home. <laughs> so 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 if what? I this is a, this is supposed to be a polite show, so I will just say that I don't. Um, I'm I'm sorry that his cats died. What? He had some really nice cats there when the mountain erupted, <laughs> and oh. those cats didn't deserve to die. That's but if sad. I take if I take a, if I take a dim view at people shooting at me, that's fair. That, that seems fair. Let's so just let's leave it at that. He shot at you. He shot at you. Is that what you say? Like yes. shot at you? Like yes. took a gun and yeah. oh my now, goodness. Well, no. What he was doing was using you know, he was using shooting rock salt. So it was sort of you know the kind oh, of the, like a potato gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. but no. still, it's gonna hurt, man. Rock salt can yeah. hurt you, like a good yeah. chunk. Chunk. And if there's a large enough chunk, you can it can penetrate to skin. So yeah, anyway, that's a different story. Yeah. Oh, um, back to yes. So 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 yes, I know. I painfully know um, who that person is, and he's gone. So, but his cats didn't deserve the fate that the cats had. They. I, I see. Sad. I see the point you are making by specifically mentioning their cats. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 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 it is as I said, it's a little bit of a thing because the mythology that that's been trying to be developed at the mountain Helens area um runs up against i mean i i, I know how history is oh. going to be done we will a century from now talk about this person heroic stuff um in fact there were some you know that 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 you know some some of the people that are dumbasses that that say don't tell me what to do i'm going to be here blah 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 i can i can survive myself i've been in these woods blah, 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 you know oh i am is, i'm just gonna remember this guy forever as guy who shot at landon the balls yeah yeah no <laughs> oh my god <Enemy> number one <laughs> well let's move on so no so, one, so no this, one hurts landon on my watch uh-uh <laughs> so there's this little lake here maybe this maybe this spot here if we go back to the maps, let's see where the maps are. Maps, maps, maps. Um, that's what this section is, right? So if you look at wow, okay. the distance here, this is about you know over a hundred meters across, right? So when we talk about this particular flow here, this is a section over hundred meters across. Now, in this particular case, why was it sunk down in? Well, we were currently in a deflation at this point. Oh, the, 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 the magma and lava up here was kind of stale. It had lost a lot of its, of its oomph. And so it was a process of sinking. So that we were in that, we were in that, um, in that section of the, uh, we were in a, we we're in a D section down here. It was deflating. Well, remember if you're, uh, you're not dense, you're light enough that the lava will be denser than you. But if you're dense enough, you can run on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and if you notice, you know, that, that where it is, even at this stage, you know, there's, there's the, the air is causing the lava to freeze and creating this buff. It's only kind of at the edge where it's boiling so forth, you get, you get the red bits. Oh, um, geez. And, and, and here it is a larger scale where there's that, there's that section. Um, it had been gunned to inflate, so it isn't quite as, as low, but again, here is that, that, that lava leg is over a kilometer across and and uh, and again, you can see it's, it doesn't have much to go before it starts spilling into this sort of second drop down area. Sometimes um, it's really hard to tell the scale on some of these pictures. And even when you put the scale yeah. in the corner, sometimes it's just really hard to wrap your mind around how large this yeah. this actually is. So, Landon, yeah, did you is, say it's 100 meters across? Is that what you said? Yeah, this, this section here is over 100 meters across. It's probably about 120 meters across. Over, okay, so like... Uh, Almost a cross section of a swimming pool, you might say. How do more than meters? that? It's 120 more like a, meters. This is more like a, uh, yeah, that's more what like I'm a, sorry. A my soccer. Bad. This is like mobile so, a soccer, soccer field. field. Yeah, sorry. How my scaling long? just went out the window. <laughs> How long just, would it just... take Usain Bolt to go across? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yes. that's a good measurement. <laughs> about about maybe about twelve seconds. Um, um, but, but again, so here's the thing, this is in this larger kilometer size section of stuff. Remember, this was the stuff we saw this, this sort of, um, you know, bread sort of rising. I need um, to ask the here. chat just while we go here to think about this and tag me on Twitter with your best answer. Um, what is the Imperial oh. version of time? So we know that there's like feet and inches. So like what's seconds yeah. to a minute in in yeah. <laughs> in in Imperial? Yeah. Let's hear that. Ooh. As as sh shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> <laughs> That's my submission. So oh, one thing that kind of happens on the lakes is you get these sort of temporary features, right? You the the the, the main activity is going on another spot. So this is zoomed in to another section of the lake. And and you get these sort of vents where stuff is outgassing and and along with the outgasses base of, of of molten rock that kind of congeal and get these little these, these little um uh degassing they're they're called hornitos h-o-r-n-i-t-o-s ah. right you know hornitos and and this is so you get gas with with volcanic stuff that kind of plates on the edge and basically builds, builds up this little crusty bit um these are very short term because they tend to be very fragile so is that when up? The, is that like a, a rise that's cracked open like a like a like a triangle or a it's a hole pyramid right? yeah when you saw kind of a pyramid thing or or, or a vent sort of mini vent yeah. it's like um open where where it's really you know fairly thin and then the, the the it might splatter a bit but also the gas might then um, carries a lot of minerals and minerals might plate out or, or, or freeze onto the edge and build this little, uh, uh event. The, the, the lava lake we saw is over farther away from the spot, but the, it's, this is sort of focusing on these little vents there. Um, but they, they will then, you know, particularly in the next deflation event, inflation event, they, they might collapse in or, or, or wind might knock them over. They tend to be very fragile. Um, but at the end of the eruption, when it finally in the end, ends and you can go down there, some of these things can be quite beautiful in terms of colors and, and interesting bits. Again, we're talking about this section here. That was a part of the collapse, and but there's all little vents over all, all little these little spots around the around the edge. Um, and these are pick a couple of pictures of it. So so when you go there, um, you know, take some good binoculars and go out and check out some of these spots because they they kind of come and go and do interesting stuff you can see here's a here's a flow a couple of days prior to that that came out in this section here it just kind of comes and goes um, go go uh, little, pick see. yourself up the flat earther camera of choice the nikon p1000 <laughs> yes here's another spot um so this this flow here was was here right this came out and did did a bunch of things and again this is a very typical stuff in the daytime at night, it's. I think it's at better at night because now you'll see the glow of these cracks become quite quite visible. The daytime, it sometimes gets washed out, um, but oh, at wow. nighttime, the glow is it's actually quite is, is quite gorgeous. And you can see little again little spots where it breaks out. Remember, this is 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 you got all this pressure underneath, and it kind of oozes out. It starts off with a little bit of a ooze out, and then it'll turn into gas, and it'll, mm. when it's burnito thing, then the gas thing will collapse. It's very, very active, um, 
Av Active Lake. Set. So that's that's a WH was doing. This is just on June twenty fourth. Little breakouts here and there. Um, I wonder how uh, many lava the, levels in games like take from these kinds of images <laughs> and take from these kinds of areas because they very much. So a lot of this is, makes me think of um, the um, basically the Mount Doom of Zelda. Yeah. Oh what's, yeah. What's, yeah. The, what's the big mountain called? Death Mountain. The big Death Mountain that where all the Gorons are from that are starving because they eat rocks and mm -hmm. even though they live in a mountain, they have no rocks to eat. I don't know. Point being, uh, like so in these... the Breath of the Wild, like uh, you get to explore sure. these areas, and this this is basically like what it, I would call it as like a minecart area in something that looks almost exactly like this. And, and, and when it, when, when, the, when the eruption finally ends and you're able to go down and walk on this stuff, these features, you know, whatever does on top will be quite beautiful features there. That it's, it's quite, it's quite uh, fun to Are see. Are you telling uh, me you can walk over there? Well, eventually right now, this, this, not only are these, you know, things called ooze outs, that's what they're called. Um, okay. Weak zone or ooze outs um, sort of imply that there's places where the stuff can start start breaking out. So, and the other problem is that that there's a lot of volcanic gas down here, so you wouldn't be able to breathe. Yeah. Um, oh, birds yeah. That, that that make a mistake of flying down near there could get overcome. And we are seriously going to have to get Landon to to go over some like cool volcano levels now too. So we we're talking about TV shows, movies. We're gonna get him to look at Mount Doom and be like, "How accurate is Mount Doom?" <laughs> From Lord of the yep, Rings. Yep, that will be great. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, lots of ooze outs again. This was this was on the you know, on the on the sixteenth, the twentieth, twenty fourth. When there, lots of little stuff going on. Um, lots of earthquakes going on. Right. Here is the here's Kilauea volcano. Here's the top of Mauna Loa. Um, this big section here is a bunch of deep quakes, where the where remember we have this this picture of stuff. Where is it? rising up towards the surface right so let me go to look at the earthquakes this is that area where the stuff is rising up towards the surface and we get lots and lots and lots and lots of quakes this is the this is in the last month there have been 532 earthquakes uh recorded uh 15 of them were between magnitude three and four it's hard to it's hard to detect a magnitude two if you're standing on top of it but three or four you would notice so like 15 quakes the last month um, you would have noticed. Um, if we go to the last two weeks, we find still lots of stuff, again, suggesting there's still lots of material coming up with deep quakes. Last two days, um, one of the things they put is that Mauna Loa um, is, has got some quakes up near its summit. Um, eventually, Mauna Loa is an active volcano. Eventually, it will erupt. Uh, but right now, Kilauea seems to be taking its... Uh, uh, take, taking the show uh, so far. Or as Hawaiians say that Madame Pele is in the House of Ferns, but someday she may walk up to the top of Mauna Loa and, and erupt there. And when Mauna Loa erupts, you get huge volume almost to the point of wiping out Hilo. It stopped just short of, of hitting uh, the town of Hilo. Kona is over here, Hilo is over here. Um, and so um, uh, people are watching Mauna Loa. It's it it is it is only on sort of the the, the caution level right now right. under advisory. Uh, but we still see quakes there. It's it's not um, it's not quiet. It definitely has a chamber there. But but uh, Kilo is again much more active. Does um, does this like how like how heavily does this tend to affect like their the the locals? Um, insurance policies and infrastructure because I imagine like if a town gets hit it's devastating yes and 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 the other thing is that the the uh, utilities get quite wiped out um, we, we don't we when... don't care about the the weekenders that are, <laughs> that are buying their timeshares <laughs> I'm talking to locals but 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 you know in this area here um, there was actually a lot of this see this thing called you know the, the PGV this was a yes. Um, this was a geothermal plant that was supplying lots of power to the, to the, uh, to the island. And, and it got a little bit too geo, spicy, and a little spicy. bit too thermal. Right. And so by this time, you know, it, it's got, you know, it, 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 it shut down and, and so forth. You know, it had been cause, cause, cause again, the lava coming here and coming down to the ocean 
and then those eruptions stopped and the magma pushed through even farther and then came out here. Now, it's been there before. Here's a 1960 eruption, 1955 eruption, 1840 eruption. So it isn't as if it hasn't done this before. Right. Um, it's just that that the, the non-natives tend to build vacation homes and other things in these estates. And uh, so this vacation plan, Hawaii, this, some uh, Hawaiians call, call this very offensive. This used to be a really beautiful place where turtles. Um, oh, yes. There, I've there heard was of a this. rare bit of turtles. And in fact, I, I got to honor of, of swimming there. If you're, if you're very polite, very discreet, they would let you come to the area and then go out and snorkel and swim with, with, with sea turtles. Um, of course, that is gone now. Um, that old called boiler because because the lava basically went out here. Because um, if you watched this thing happening, right, it 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 went down the fissure and it went boop 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 and wiped out, and so there's no longer any bay anymore. But this bay used to be the place where the kings and queens of Hawaii would would bathe. It was a sacred area that only the elite could could go. Um, and they built a bunch of vacation homes and it is, as 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 so I am said, this was a case where, uh, where basically a bunch of drunk college students would basically terrorize the place and, and they just right. leave because in spring break, it just gets kind of insane. And now it is a uh, lava. So, so people, you know, the, the claim is Pele took care of the problem. <laughs> was, was, uh, is that I mean, in, in it's form? not inaccurate to be fair. So um, they do, they or, or, they tend to be a little bit smarter about where they're they're vacationing yeah. or where they are if they're or, or if they're locals where they're building more a permanent esque settlements. So hey, if you're looking for any uh, looking to buy real estate in Hawaii, pay attention. <laughs> By the way, yep. Hawaiian law says that the new land that's created is public. Ooh. So if you had beachfront oh, property wow. here, you uh -huh. lose because because. Because your property is a couple of feet below the rock. In the case of the thickness right. here, the, 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 the rock was about 50 meters thick in this area. So right. you own below the rock and all this stuff is now new public land. Um, your, your land rights, you got rock way down there on, on top of a bunch of, and given how thick it is, there still is liquid lava down in this section, right? So, so right, right. essentially you, you lose. Now, uh, I have a good friend that had a had a, a a homestead in this region near this this area, and um, he uh, got. I mean, he left you know long before when when the, when 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 they saw the the sensors. You saw earthquakes here, and gas started showing up in this area, and and the wine said, "Okay, time to leave," because they were watching the same stuff we did, and they basically right. said, "Hey, something's happening around here," and and they they were gone. So this gentleman. Um, uh, left his his house is wiped out, but he feels that he was blessed by Pele because he had enough warning signs that he left. He left yeah. with his with his family, with his dogs, his cats, and his chickens. They they took all the stuff out, and basically the the trashell of his of his home was was wiped out. But 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 he came back, and I have a picture of him um, leaving a bottle of whiskey in front of the lava flow, thanking Pele for letting the family uh, leave. And in fact, there, right. there are a bunch of Hawaiians that wanted him to, to come to their land. Like there are people, and he, there's oh. a, a family that basically gave him the back side of their property saying, please come here because in Hawaiian terms, he is a special person. He is someone that Pele- He's been blessed. Yes. Been blessed and it's Pele. good luck. And in, and in, they say, yeah, it's a, we know it's a volcano, but, but it's considered a high honor to have a person like that living on your land. I mean, I can't um, even say I'm against that. That That is basically social economics of people helping each other out and respecting people who may have lost some things, but not have lost their families. And that yes. and being respectful yeah, enough to say like, hey, you listen, you were smart enough to leave. And so we want to make sure that that your two brain cells that you can rub together, you have a place to stay <laughs> because sure, those are the sure. people we want to survive and reproduce. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, that too, you yeah. know, um, evolution. And, and that's also like, this also about like um, replacing what they've lost. So they lost a house and that's a significant investment when you build a house. 
So you want to, and if they survive, you want to make sure. And even if they were survived by their children and stuff, they made sure if their children were safe, if not themselves. You want their children to grow up, you know, with some stability, you know, and a stable environment. So people thrive when they have stability. So you want to give them that chance, you know, again. And yes. um, as uh, and spread the blessing, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Share the blessing. Yeah. And, and there is this notion of of that that um, so his his status rose uh, in the community, and at the same time, there's a lot of stories where they that that this legend sort of goes like this, where there was this village, and this lady came, this old lady came by and asked for some water, and they said, "Oh, get out of here, lady! Stop bumming off with us. Go bother someone else." And so she went to another village where she said, can I have some water? And I said, yes, ma'am, you can have some water, but we're also cooking some food. Would you please, you know, um, do us honor of, 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 of banging this fish and so forth. And they, they, they served her a meal and she thanked them and went on her way. Well, that of course was, they say was, that was Pele. And there was eruption in the bad, the inspired little, you know, the, the, the village that wasn't nice got wiped out and the village that was nice, the, the lava went around or they were spared. And so there's this notion um, a lot of you see in Polynesian cultures where where hospitality. Um, hospitality, especially if you feed somebody, is a very very high status. Now, now they expect if you're there to, to behave, but but for visitors they they're 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 very present, very tolerant. And so if you were to go to this person's estate, he would tell you the story about about the about the eruption and and, and the lava and so forth. Um, and would be very willing to share with you, uh, you know, so some of his so his finest food and papayas and apple bananas and all kinds of yummy stuff. Um, yeah, there he's, he's quite he, and he teaches his children about this sort of thing, and so they're they're right. uh, 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 stuff. And I, I it, it he 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 gave uh, Pele some really really fine whiskey from Seattle. It turned out. Oh. And uh, but 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 also when they when they offer things, this this Polly would think of virgin sacrifices. No, they don't do that. They they take things Thank of God. value, and 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 one thing is that 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 before the bottle was left, they didn't take a, this bottle and throw it in into the to to the lava. Um, they they took it to the lava and basically served it around. And the people that were standing around it got to taste the 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 really good whiskey, and it really was quite fine whiskey. And, and part of the show, Pele, we're not giving you trash. We're giving you the good stuff and we're sharing it with you, right? This is Pele personified there, participating in the group stuff. And so I got to taste this fine whiskey. The, the bottle was, was only about a third consumed by this two dozen people around there. The bottle was set near the flow, eventually it was consumed and Pele got to uh, partake of it. And again, Damn, said, yeah, she must have had a good whiskey. night. That's the point. And, he had the whole and, thing. He had the whole yeah, day. She yeah. must have had a good night. <laughs> I will point out that in this area is a bunch of medicinal herbs or snacky cakes that are grown, um, allegedly, and that you could, I could, I could tell that um, these herbs were being burned by the lava. Um, <laughs> the smoke was so the smoke of these herbs was allegedly in the air. Um, and, and, and Pele had a really good smoke on from that stuff. So there was a bunch of stuff in this area, allegedly. That's Man, one of the things that- Pele's got the best life. She's getting the best whiskey. She's getting the best weed. She, she's, she's getting the, you know, the best water, food, every, everywhere she goes. Yeah. Like, she's got the best, like, she yeah, she's a goddess. It. She, she deserves goddess. it. Of yeah. course and she again, deserves it's, it. It's, I'm it's, just it's saying, she gets the, the finest stuff. Healthy respect, however, that's the other thing is that that yes. that, yeah. that this is sorry thing, but but again, it's it really is kind of fun to see how it's done in the culture. And again, they'll say, yeah, we know some volcanoes and lava and so forth, but 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 as one guy says, told me, he says, you guys got you got your Santa Claus in your uh, tooth fairy. We have our Pele. So yeah, I mean, there's the, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with tradition. There's nothing wrong with You've culture. Got a shiva. They're not throwing people into the lava. Like there's some such a thing yeah. as like a healthy community stories to help with help children to help the community be a better place like these are not this is not a toxic 
type of caustic no. problem. This is something that yeah. helps these people, yeah, live in their day to day lives, and that's you know. That's just imagine if you come to this community and you visit them and they're nice to you, you'll go out and talk. Yeah, they were nice to me. So that message goes out, you know. And when you meet someone from that community outside, you know, you will be like, oh, I heard this about you. It's about that, you know, that spreading that good cheer and that reputation. Yeah. You know, um, it's funny. Yes. When, when we do our risk assessments, a lot of companies, they take into account these things. Reputation in, in, um, in times of crisis is a very, huh. very major thing that they are worried about. So in this pandemic, when this happened, our organization was very much worried about the reputation of whether they're paying their employees well, they're treating their employees well, and all that stuff, whether they are, if they are going to introduce any new policies and stuff are they con in regards to covid are they consulting with the employees or not because immediately the word gets out and the activists kind of know oh yeah this this company is not treating the employees well so so reputation matters and it travels yes. quite quickly we have seen that in johnny depp case also like you said like a seismic you know activity just went all around the world so so yeah so reputation matters and um how you can get that is by being nice to people well i mean you, and you see people threatening that kind of thing too right you'll see people that will say like hey listen you're never going to work on this work in this town again and sometimes that's valid and sometimes it's not sometimes it's over yeah. something that is that is not yeah. reasonable um, right so so that yeah. polynesian hospitality is 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 very common throughout polynesia i mean the, the polynesian triangle on the northern tip is hawaii the, 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 the basically the southwestern is New Zealand and the southeastern is Easter Island. That that big triangle is was, is sort of defined as Polynesian. And the peoples in the area um, have very similar languages. They have very similar terms for volcanoes, very similar traditions because there were a lot of migration. I mean, the the historic records show that Polynesians first arrived in the Hawaiian Islands probably around uh, twelve to fourteen hundred. And and they they and so they they share a lot of similar um, uh, traditions there. And I've had really great experiences with Maori in in, in New Zealand, right? Where oh, yeah. um, being a little bit respectful, and then they feed you, and you have a great time. I had a food I had is a such a big deal. Absolutely, I had a wonderful time on Guy Fox night with a bunch of Maori uh, celebrating. Uh, I think they were celebrating oh, yeah. or, or commiserating that 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 he wasn't successful, but that's a different story. But but oh, yeah, we had a great different in interpretations. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing is that if you if you ever come to New Zealand, try hungi. Hungi is a traditional way of cooking meat, mm. and it's like mm. it's awesome. And they and also the fish and as well. if you yeah. yes, the fish yes, awesome. So when you come to New Zealand, taste the food, but also visit our um our geothermal um parks so they're beautiful yes. and they you can taste the food there how they use the geothermal power to cook food and stuff like they use steam and um so it's it's awesome it's wonderful and you can go and visit their um their mud pools so they i don't know if they have medicinal properties or not but it's it's a good dip in there um, it, it is yeah. it, it feels nice I would say it feels nice, oh, yeah. and and then they'll, they'll they'll build these these pits down near the hot rocks. They'll they'll line the pits with these uh, these these herbs and these 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 tea leaves with stuff wrapped in it, and then start putting the papayas and the, and the mm. barrel roots, and on top of that, they'll put in the wrap the fish in these leaves, and then wrap the uh, a, a pork or a pig on top of it, and then cover it up and let it smoke smolder for for a day while they dance and sing and have a good time and it's it is it's it's wonderful right and when it the, comes the, out it's like heaven oh yes. yes yes it is it is excellent so so on the other hand the other thing I, I say is that um if you all of a sudden say I want to live here then they sit you down and say okay if you want to be here you need to learn traditions you need to learn respect you need to learn behavior and and they will somewhat tolerate a tourist misbehaving or misrespecting. But if you want to live there, you need to, to, to learn the cycle of behavior. And you'll see another side of Polynesians that if you say, I want to live here, but I don't want to follow the rules. 
It's the Caesar Milan technique. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I've been working I, on a, I've been working on a video like that. It's basically about can you take Caesar Milan's psychology of dogs and apply it to humans? And you'd be oh my God. you'd be surprised. Almost all of it is entirely applicable to humans. There's one yeah. thing that is not, and it is just the order of events because dogs go sure. nose, uh, nose, eyes, ears. I think, whereas humans go eyes, ears, nose. Like nose is not. I mean, if somebody smells bad, it's gonna be a problem, but it, it's not as high on the priority. We, we depend on our eyesight a lot. A and, lot. And, and to be fair, people are bad at listening. And to also be fair, if you stank, you're going to have a bad time. So people aren't going to want to interact with Talk you. Talk to you, not sit down with you. If, if I, can, I don't care if you smell good or if you smell bad. If I can smell you from five feet away, yet something is not going quite the way it should. That's too much for me. Yeah, I've had to say, you know, when I've been, when I go there, I make it clear to the people that I'm a visitor. I don't intend yeah. to live here, even though I might show up on occasion, because again, behavior of people living there is different. And, and they'll say something like, um, if you were somebody who was, who was being obnoxious to people, who not being hospitable, not showing that Polynesian uh, 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 sensibilities, um, they would say you put the village in danger, right? Right. That, that, that the bitterness oh, they yeah. have is because of their society and because of the way they work with land and live with land. And, and if you're somebody who's creating a problem, you know, the, the, the kind of thing is that, you know, that village that was mean to the lady lost the village and people died, right? right? So it's, they will all, yeah. they'll, they'll almost say essentially you're putting our way of life at risk. Yep. You being a jerk puts us at risk and you'll find that they will enforce the social con contract very, very effectively. So, so don't think that this this nice behavior gives you an excuse to behave like a like an ass. It's like going to a local bar. If you're a regular at the bar, you know the social expectation and the social etiquette of that bar. Actually, that's what we're going to be talking about a whole bunch when. Um, uh, Tattoo and Bones Trevor comes on as well as Sam. We're going to be talking about table etiquette because if you're going to join in a social group, you're going to join in at a D&D &D table, you're going to go to a local bar. If you don't know or understand what the rules of that bar are and you insult one of the waitresses who's like a regular oh. niece or something, you're going to get the crap kick out of you and you're going to deserve yeah. it. So like that's that, that understanding these kind of social hierarchies is is a must if you're ever going to become a regular and and live in these spaces. Yeah. I want to just give you a last bit of thing before we answer the questions on there. Just a, a yes, if you do have questions, on. yeah, if you have questions, get them in now. Please tag me so that way I can uh, I can. See I, will, them. I will ask the I'll ask the first question. So so wait wait far, not yet. Uh, he's he's going to his last thing. We're not at questions yet. Last, last step. But 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 here's here's okay, a, okay, here's got a it, got picture. Zoom in a little bit occurred. though, Landon. Um, let me go here, and then I'm going to I'm going to loop. So this is a this is a live picture of that that particular fisher again. Let's let's do an update. That was at eight thirty one local time. Let's do an update and see what happens. And that's yeah. So you can see it it filled a little bit. And this building wow, here. Wow, it opened up a new hour. pool, isn't it? Yeah. It kind of, yeah this, this, kind of, new, this is kind of cracking here. Yeah. yeah. I'm that, seeing that, at that's... the top. I'm seeing at the yes. top, like that whole new pool that opened up. Is that a new yeah. one or is yeah. that an old one? Yeah, that, that just that just happened in the last, in last hour as we've been chatting. Oh, wow. Dang. <laughs> Paley be like. Well, so, watch me yeah she's 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 moving in. here's she another knows. spot here um mm. again it's a little it's a little bit smoky because again you're looking through the vog vog is volcanic smog right it's it's the volcanic gas um and so if we look at the we do a thing and, and do a do a reload here to what happens there it is okay you see that now it, now it cleared out and you saw that move out pretty fast Let's look here. Here's a here's a wide angle thing. One of the, some some hornitos, other things here. I like that. love wide angle shots. This is awesome. All right. So, and you can so see the gas is escaping and everything. Nice. Yeah. So All the right, birds so can't fly over this thing, right? They will just drop dead. Well, they they tend to 
it depends on how the wind is blowing, right? Particularly because the wind is, okay. seems to be coming from from the, the 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 lower right to to the to the upper left. Um, I imagine birds that go down into here might have a harder time breathing than birds over here, but it kind of depends. They the birds that are smart tend to stay away from this stuff. On um, the ones that are dumb, don't breathe. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so so here is it. Here was at eight thirty. Let's let's reload it and see what happened. And there it is. Okay, so the wind has changed a little bit. This guy's got a little more active. It's got a little yeah. active here. This guy started up here. Yep. Um, and there's and a little bit of, of, of oozing out in this spot. Again, this is lava, right? This is lava here. This is what lava looks like in the daytime because it crusts over very quickly, right? So we've got a little spill over here, spill over there. Um, there's Billings Island. So let's look at another set here. So here's a thermal image looking into that spot. Remember, this is that, that, that segment over, where was it? Uh, come, come back. Yeah. So this is this segment but from a different angle in, in a thermal camera. Yeah. So that, that shape, That's right? The, and so, mm. right, and you saw the beginning, the beginning of looks like stuff coming out here. So let's look what happened in the last hour. And we see now, now it's actually much more active here. This, this is yeah, now hotter, so let me throw there. And then this kind of rose up and, and kind of split into that section for the, for the last hour. Uh, finally, air quality. I mean, there's a lot of gas coming out. Um, there's these gas sensors that 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 they they monitor at various spots, so that people that might be sensitive to asthma or other things can can get get warning levels. Um, but but the wind is mostly going this direction, so the so the, the the volcanic gas goes this direction. When the trade winds shift and it starts moving, for example, to the let's say to to the west a little bit north, that's when places like um, uh, even like Honolulu can get you know, gases coming over, but but this is that's, the current spot um, here. That's how we also like um, when we are doing our emergency response and stuff. So if there's an ammonia leak, we that's why there we have like wind socks, and um, it matters when the gas if we have an ammonia leak because mm -hmm. depending on the wind direction, we'll decide where we will evacuate the whole site to. So, yep. or all the people from the plant too, because ammonia is, yeah, um, just one, it's not, it's not good to breathe, obviously. And number two, if it catches fire, it's just going to go boom. So, and it's going to go in the direction in which it's blowing. So you want to keep your people away from, out of its way. So, yeah, that's why I understand why they, they monitor the direction in which the wind blows, because if it starts going towards the actual habitat there might be as you said people who have asthma or it can cause acute it can cause acute poisoning also if if uh yes the, if yes. it's high if the gases are high enough yeah and parts per million that's what how the, how you measure Absolutely. It, so. yeah so so this is this is showing for example some of the spots that that because it can get up quite quite high so when you look at some of the stuff going on here um you know the, the we had we had moderate health levels down here because the general wind direction is going over this over, over this site right and you had a basic advisory where you saw all right now about 25 uh, micrograms per, per meter per tick that's that's at the 2.5 level um you can get quite you can get quite uh hazardous stuff if if you're if you're not careful so if you're out in the field doing monitoring we always have with us gas masks and, and respirators just in, and, and alarm right? the sensors are sensing stuff and 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 when the alarm goes off you put on your mask right away because uh, you know the, the stuff is going because the wind can change quite oh quite, yes quite quickly yes quite quickly yes and, and and you also will have you get near the spot you'll have these suits even though it's like 70 percent humidity um it can you know you need to put on fire retardant suits even though climbing into the suit doesn't seem to be the nicest thing to do um but for you know for for a you know if if you're if you're really into a a a situation um, you can get, you know, bad stuff. So it's like, for example, here's a case where there was a facility here downwind and it got to the stage where you got into the caution level because of the, of the, um, of, of the, of the set. And that was, that you know, can be moderately unhealthy, particularly for people that, that have respiratory problems. So they, they try to 
alert these people and let tell people to go indoors. Just and so forth. make sure you so, don't tell them to wear a mask. Right. So orange is unhealthy for sensitive groups. Yes. <laughs> um, and so what they would say for somebody who, let's say, is asthmatic or has pulmonary respiratory conditions, so they would say, go indoors. We have filter air filtration. Don't be outdoors at this stage. Right. To the right. point where it gets to unhealthy and then dangerous. and then deadly, you know, dangerous. And then you will you will croak stuff. But that's a especially so, when so um, you will croak, especially stuff. when humidity is high. The humidity is high, so these um, ashes oh, yes. or this, uh, these gases can get attached to your, um, what do you say, water vapors, water molecules, and if you mm -hmm. inhale them like that, they stick inside your lungs and they can cause more problems. So, yep, and, that's and why the humidity sulfur levels dioxide are will so then, You're right, because the sulfur dioxide will get combined with water and you'll basically have sulfuric acid in your lungs, which is not a good thing. Yep. Yikes. <laughs> so, Chemistry. So, Everyone. <laughs> yeah. So you thought so this was just about geology. No, 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 no. We're talking about atmosphere pressure. We're talking about wind directions. We're talking to your local forecasters. We're talking about chemistry. Don't run online. Right, so here's an over. Right, here's the overlook. Um, currently with with people there, and you can look down into the lava lake and see goey bits and so forth. Um, but you can see that you can see that the the, the smoke, the gas. Is basically heading off towards to the southwest, um, and they have monitor stuff, and they'll have little alarms like saying, "Hey, you know, it's not if you're going to instantly die, unless you're right down there, right?" Um, but but when it when it flips around, when the trade winds flips around, and, and things starts blowing in a the direction, then they'll have basically those stuff saying, "Hey, if you're sensitive to stuff, um, you know, children, people with lung diseases, very old adults, active people." So um, is there? Is there like a siren that you use, a, like a audio alarm, or is it like just yeah? Like there, there, there's at the south there's, there's audio alarms that basically say when it gets to the unhealthy levels, right? And again, we're talking yeah, about yeah. So because you know, because for tornadoes you have like sirens, right? So I I, yeah. I was guessing maybe for these type of events also you would have some sort of like audio alarms and yeah. audio systems. Yeah, but when you're talking about you know five parts per million of 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 dust you're you're talking about really bad stuff and again that dust contains yeah. lots of oxide and and acid stuff um so so uh there's a whole page about this sort of thing and and, and what to do when you come to the national park they'll give you a a, a, you, know, a, a you know a brochure about how their stuff staying safe again it's not as if you're going to immediately drop dead but it sort of says don't go jogging when 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 there's a when the wind i have shift, a right? question and, maybe sure we can do it next time. You know the White Island um, in New Zealand, the tragedy that happened? Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can discuss that a bit and um, from yeah. safety point of view. Um, what could the signs that um, the tourists could have seen or okay. the guides could sure. have seen so they could have gotten people to safety? Because I think so, we could, uh, like, I personally feel a lot could have been done um, to get people to safety and people would, like, um, it's it's um, triggering stuff. I will warn you, um, because a, a lot of people who sustained injuries have sustained lifetime burns, um, uh, yeah. high degree burns, if I might say. So if you want, Chesh, I don't know if you might yeah. be interested. Maybe for the next episode, we can talk about that because that happened because um, the volcano erupted, if I'm not wrong, and then ash spewed, and that ash that spewed caused a lot of burns, um, if I'm not wrong. So is that? Do you think that's a good topic for next one, Chesh? I, yeah. I think so. Uh, don't ask me. Yeah. Landon's the one who knows this stuff. <laughs> I think it, 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 yeah. so, so here's the thing. Let's let's look at the next ten minutes. Let's. So here's what it looks like now. Let's there do another. Go. I think another ten minute update. Let's see what happens. Da, 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 loading. Yep. So now it's broken up a bit more. This is a little bit more yeah. uh, oozing things. A little less going into here. Right. And it's it's wonderful to watch. So again, it's very safe. Um, you just you know it's like any kind of natural thing you need to be be respectful so what about uh, questions for uh for for stuff or, or vulnerable or is folks? telling us amber heard sucks okay now next time how sulfur dioxide can turn into sulfuric acid <laughs> they're, they're, they're making fun of how diverse the channel is <laughs> hey come on it's not boring 
<laughs> There's uh, I did ask a question to the chat, and I asked the chat uh, if they've learned something today, and I gave them, yes, I've learned something, no, I haven't learned anything, no new things, but I liked it anyway, and yes, and I'm mad about it. So... <laughs> <laughs> mad about it? <laughs> and listen, some people are very, like, adverse to being like, I didn't know that thing. Damn yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But say, so... I mean, there's just been so much covered uh, that, like, I don't even know what questions to even ask because, like, we just covered so much and it's so interesting. I almost need to mull it over for an hour and a half before I'll I'll come up with any questions <laughs> I didn't already yeah. ask. I would I would encourage you to go and look at the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, um, and it'll talk about spots that are. You know, what's what's happening there and and in the history and so forth mm. but again this is a this is a really nice national park you can go to small entrance fee um i would if you want to stay you can stay um it, you know it, it let's go back to the map where's the map the map is not that map uh the the less yeah if you look at the, the map here and we'll zoom out a little bit so this map um, should be updated now right because there's new activity yeah, there'll be yes um this was a june 21st map here so so you know the the, the volcano village has lots of uh uh b and b's and and nice hotels and and really nice spots you know uh, um you know restaurants and other things there but you can come and stay at volcano house here it's a, a it's a it's a lodge that was found goes back to the mid 1800s um uh, Samuel Clemens, otherwise known as Mark Twain, actually stayed there as a guest and wrote the Roughing It, if you know about his writings. He wrote Roughing It at Volcano wow. House um, and describes in the 1830s the, 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 the wow. activities going on in, in there. He's, he's quite a, you know, he's, he's quite a, a writer, as you know. And uh, so, so that's a spot you can stay at, um, Volcano House. and. Uh, it's you know you can go and look at these overlooks here here and here look down inside there very safely um the nice visitor center and all things as well as 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 other things to do in the community around here and it's just a uh um about a about a uh 30 minute drive from hilo you can fly into hilo or if you fly into kona you have to about a two-hour drive across the, the big island but but um coming in on the uh to, towards hilo i have a right question on, you know, yeah, Do, does the locals' descriptions of what they think is going on tend to match scientifically? So they might not know what words or what measurements mean what thing that precisely, but do they tend to have a pretty good feel for whereabouts the volcano is going to be at or where it's headed or some? They'll know what's going on without, in, like, more inherently or intuitively. Yes, to to, to, to to a certain extent. I mean, certainly. They are also locals that are monitoring the, the data. Of course, but also yes, scientifically, all scientifically speaking, a lot of the words we have developed on volcanism are are Polynesian Hawaiian. Based on so we talk about them. pohoi hoi and aa flows and so forth. Those are all names which, if you go to a place like Easter Island, they'll recognize those words because they're Polynesian words that describe their their area. So they have lots of terms for rock and and types of lava. Um, not just lava and rock, they have lots of descriptive terms, old and new, that are also very much part of the scientific lingo. Um, so we you use now a lot of the terms from there. Certainly, Kilwe being one of the most well-monitored volcanoes in the world, um, start off by, by uh, a person named Jagger, not that Jagger, but an even older Jagger, um, uh, of over, over, you know, over a hundred and almost 110 years ago, he started a, a, a permanent station um, in this this area right here. Um, this, this this little overlook. Um, we saw those people in that in that in that other overlook spot. They were standing. They're standing at the the. This is this is the overlook where his observations post is, and they've had continuous monitoring of what what Paley has done in the last you know. 110 years now, I think, probably close to that. Um, but as I say, it, it is it is a, a, a spot where where you can talk to the park rangers, listen to the stories. Um, there are trails you can hike in and see 
you know, geothermal things, and you can come to the overlooks and see this area, right? And when you when you come in the nighttime and see these cameras at nighttime, and you'll see that glow come here. You, it's not it's not present now because of the daylight glare, but at night when the, when the thing is soft, you can see all the glow from this coming up um, from this from this large lava lake, and you can see the the, the slow churns of, of things going in, and then something will break out and push and it's, it's quite a spectacular thing. And, and uh, as I say, um, Osama Clinton's captured some really beautiful stuff about. Uh, I'll just say this. Below. Volcanoes are the real dragons of the earth. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> who would, who yeah. would fight you about that? <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't think that, that is, in fact, the case? Uh, <laughs> Manu, you said you had a question. I don't know if you managed to ask it or if you were waiting. So, feel free. Um, so I'm just asking. So we see there's there's a lot more lava activity from last time when we saw Pele, yes. and um, yes, and it's good in a way because you can see that new lava coming to the surface because then you're not wondering where else it might be going. Is that is that what yes. it is? Um, okay, good. And and because like it, it, because it's in this pit, it tends to stay down there. It's hard for it to get up over. But at some point. This pit will rise up high enough that it'll start entering the tubes. But at that point, hopefully what we will see in earthquakes is we'll start to see more stuff. If, if, if the lava's magma is coming down here to come out some spot, we'll start to see earthquake, 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 quake, 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 quake. Yeah, because yeah. as the lava comes up, it's, act, it's, it's uh, imposing more pressure downwards also, isn't it? So Yes, and cracking how... rocks open and so forth, and yeah. gas starts throwing up. Right when you yeah, so there's all kinds of gas pressure, around mass. here as well. Yes, tilts the, the the ground will will tilt slightly. The temperature will change. The gas sensors will start showing little bits of stuff. Little cracks will start to get a little bit more warmer. And so that's, that's when what you, you saw. And that's when you will start maybe going around the island and start looking for maybe if there's yeah. an outlet or somewhere, isn't it? So yeah, um, and and. Uh, one last question. So the level of lava has increased from last time, isn't it? That's what you said. So yeah, the the, the, the lake level has risen. Also, the activity last month she was a little bit more sedate. Now she's a little bit more frisky, right? But that doesn't mean the that whiskey, next month. So... <laughs> it it doesn't mean that next month it couldn't. It's stop, not right? tequila, it, Manya. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Um, but, but meanwhile, they put monitors here. I mean, this this particular thing, this instrument here, is actually a magnetic thing to chain, look for small changes in the magnetic fields. Because they're noticing ah. as rocks get gets get strained and, and crushed, you get piezoelectric conditions of currents that change the oh, magnetic yeah. spectrum very subtly. Oh yeah. Right? So this is this I, is a I sensitive guess, magnetometer putting into the ground. So that would be because your lava consists of a lot of metals, isn't it? And when metals mm -hmm move and flow back and forth they will cause change in magnetic fields the piezoelectric current um those properties yep. change so that sensor will be so based on that you can kind of guess like what's the rate of flow and stuff is that what you're saying yes and and so we're trying to put a lot of sensors into the area in hopes to try to find try to see well ahead of time when the eruption starts going so when you know, because because one of the questions is going to be, you know, will the will the how long will the will the lava stay into the zone, right? And at some point, yeah. look here, you're zooming in. At some point in Haleemau here, it's going to start, right? Because historically, this is what it does. It's not going to always stay here for rest for, for the end of the universe, right? Last time, yeah, we talked around. about how it was moving even like over miles and or meters and meters and meters kilometers 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 just from yeah. where it, the islands are located yeah. but even that's the hot spot underneath but but even even more so mm -hmm. you know here this is not a case but here's a case where they look for is here's an earthquake 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 these these are going down the spine where that crack is and so yeah. as as pressure is here this crack starts we start seeing now when magma starts moving, we'll see lots and lots and lots of we'll see da, 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 right, da, right? Yeah. Assumably, right? And so part of what you saw was people putting instruments out here. The other direction it can go is this way. Because remember, in that in that plot, there is this huge swarm of quakes way down here. Ah, oh, yeah. Look at this right. huge swarm, right? This is that large number of quakes in this area. 
and this is these are deep quakes that 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 are that, that are actually quite quite deep um mm -hmm. that are coming up because you look at these these are these are way 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 down in in the right. in the, the set and the ocean. Yeah. and so mm -hmm. there's lots of 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 monitoring going around here to try to watch understand understand what's happening um and so yeah but you can see there's a this this chain of 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 stuff what they're looking for is is patterns again you'll see when you come to next month you'll begin to see the rhythm that pele has right and when the rhythm keeps going then you can say well it's probably stay the same but when it changes rhythm when something has an abrupt change they will say okay what's happening try to get an idea because it right. might be the end of an eruption it might be the start of a new eruption it might be moving of stuff um you never know well we should probably start looking to wrap up soon. And I do want to notice that uh, we didn't mention Landon's shirt for today. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry, Trademark Canada. Sorry. Uh, so Bye. happy Canada Day, Canada. everybody out there. You got Florida yes. July coming soon. I don't know how celebratory Americans are feeling right now, considering the situation. But oh, catch up goodness. with <laughs> us tomorrow night to be able to talk about that a little bit more. We'll be talking about medical stuff. We'll be talking about um political stuff we'll talk about how that political stuff is affecting medical stuff as well as climate change stuff there's a lot that's been going on and i did want to wait a little bit before going live about it so we could kind of see a little bit of the fallout of the decision instead of just talking about the decision itself so now we're starting to see some of the effects and the dominoes that are falling in place after that um after tomorrow join me on i believe monday we'll be doing a little bit more art so if you enjoy art and you're here for some uh you know of that that will be on monday uh, as well, follow me on Twitter and stuff. You can keep in keep uh, in touch. Also, coming on the Wednesday is going to be our first DM interview with Sam from Roleplaying and Roleplaying. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that, especially yeah. after wa watching Alexandria: The Cal Calamity Unlimited. I'm just I'm just so excited. Yeah. About uh, that. The next debate hub is going to be on the 9th and it's going to be with Jeff and Egghead and that's going to be about guns, so that's probably going to get a little bit political. It'll be Ooh. one one's from Texas, one Shots fired! <laughs> I mean, really. Um, and then we have another Goblin Lair coming up on the 13th with Trevor Vale, and I'm really, really excited for that one as well. So that is what oh is coming down the pipeline here. I am a busy boy. I'm in talks right now with David Silberman. He might or may not be coming on to talk about some of the stuff he's been working on. I'm in talks with a handful of people. I can't tell you all of the details, but you know. Uh, and I do believe we're going to be doing another one of these at the end of August so we can keep up and see what's changed, what we've learned. What's... So make sure you took notes and screenshots so you can compare it next time. What do you guys got going on? Me? Yeah, well, show it for me. We'll what's covered. happening? Um, not much, but you'll see me tonight, uh, not tonight, sorry, um, on Tomorrow. the, the unknown, uh, the unnamed cavern, sorry, my bad. And, um, yeah, I'll have a few choice words to say about what's going on in the U.S. And, um, if you want, you can catch up with my previous live stream that I did on Shesh's channel where, um, where I revisited Michelle Darber, um, who is still on a power trip and, um, oh boy. Yeah, I had a few choice words for her. So you can watch that if you want to, um, if you like to hear the drone of my voice. But um, yeah, so we're trying to keep up to date with a lot of people we have been covering in the last few weeks. So hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll do that again. Um, the Dumb Fact Friday, hopefully, if she has time for it, because she's a busy bee right now. <laughs> no, it's which a busy is good, bee. Which is good. Yeah, there will, be, is there good. will be one next Friday. Ah, yeah, here we go. So yeah, you can. Uh, I might be there. You can find me there, or you can find me on Twitter if you want to have a chat with me. That's me. Links yep. below. Yeah. Links in the visual. Landon, what are you up to? Um, just as one question asked about, um, someone asked about one about uh, Molokai, um, yes. which is an island near Maui. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll show you here this spot. Oh. This is where it is. It's a really nice. Um, Agurian Island. One of the things that this island was known for is a leper colony. It had a had had a historic leper colony there that was was uh, operated for a while. It has an interesting history that had over you know eight thousand oh. people at one point. Um, it's noted now tourism, but it used to be very agrarian uh, society. So um, there's nice little you know you see nice uh, uh, pictures of of stuff when you go oh, into the airport where they get friendly it's so things. Colorful. And it really is. It really quite a. It's quite a beautiful. Oh, beautiful I'm sorry. Spot did that just there. say 
Post a nut coconut. Post a nut coconuts. Post office. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can post a, a coconut um, to, uh, to, like, oh mailing, my God. It's like mailing a potato, but it's a coconut. Yes, yes, nice. yes. It's, 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 it's a fun, a fun spot. So I would, I would encourage you to, you know, that, that there are places, when you, if you go to Hawaii, don't go to Honolulu, don't go to Waikiki, go to a place where there's actually real people in real society. And you'll There's actually get to explore and learn something and, and yes, yes. enjoy the culture. Yes. Right. Don't so, be a so, dick. So, yes. And that's what I say. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I have, you know, we're working on, uh, working on some, some technical projects, a lot of doing a lot of coding. Uh, I'm working on some uh, other items for, uh, for travel. I'm going to be traveling um, to uh, Central Europe. Uh, Ooh. In, in, in August for a friend. One of my former um, uh, interns uh, is getting married and I'm going to uh, go to a local hey. village and see, see a, 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 a authentic wedding um, in, <gasps> in, in awesome. spots. Um, and, and, but anyways, that'll be a, a fun little experience for, for that and get to touring around. Um, apparently, the, 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 the tradition, rather than them going on a honeymoon, they take all their friends around and tour the place, right? So, so um, I, I get that 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 their tradition. So they said, "Hey, come over here, uh, and uh, then you can join our 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 basically uh, a, our our wedding party as we tour around the area for for two weeks." So I'll be Very in, cool. uh, wow. in in various parts of uh, Central Europe. Um, I, I we won't go too near a certain something or other. Uh, mm. but, but it'll, but it'll, cause we'll be in another spot, but we'll try to avoid, um, We're trouble. It'll be, it's safe. It's safe. It's safe. It's actually, it's actually quite safe. It's, it's, it's even. Landon even says safer. that and then he gets attacked by pirates and shot at. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it is, it actually is safe, considered safer COVID wise than it's, even Canada at the moment. So it's safe relative to oh. Landon. Yeah. And by the way, by the way, as well. Think of Kennedy. I I'm, I uh, I got my uh, Nexus Pass approved, um, so nice. it should show up in this this month sometime, and I'll be able to drive or walk across the border with impunity after I fill out my arrive can. Because to go to Canada, you've got to fill out the arrive can um, yep. thing. Get on, ah, get out okay. after but you do that, and and then you can go all across and and uh, sing. So nice. so so Jess, my my question for you is. Um, What's the first thing when I cross the border I should buy? What would you recommend? Where are you crossing the border at? Um, somewhere. Are you between... like in British Columbia? Yes, British Columbia. Pro province is close enough. Weed. British Columbia is like <laughs> known for having good weed. So I would recommend hitting a weed store. Look, look at that. Well, <laughs> I would say that, 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 that actually that's an interesting thing. Um, because uh, because when when you apply for the for this this nexus pass you are getting both canadian and american approval right and yeah. so you go to the station apply in person you go to a station there are two people right and an american they ask questions and the canadian ask questions and and they they kind of go back and forth to to sort of check you to see they ask you the same question to see can you remember your birth date and can you can you uh, tell me about where you're born? And they ask you questions to make sure your veracity of things. Yeah. And um, we got to the stage where we, we they talked about, they said, okay, so in the last 15 years, you've been to da, 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 the list of the countries. And they kind of stopped and said, can you tell me some more of those countries? Uh -oh. And and I and I started listing more and more countries. There have been a lot of countries. And then at some point, you know, they said, well, is there anything you know, missing? And so, well, yes, um, there is something missing. The, the Canadian application I, I said, I don't mean to be critical, but Canadian application um, doesn't allow me to list Antarctica because it's not a country. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's, and the president says, well, the, 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 is just and, the American, and, and American said, well, it's, it's a continent. Um, so, and I said, well, so is, and then the Canadian says, well, so is Australia. And they get a illustration. You're looking around saying, you're right. Um, uh, because no wonder Atlanta gets this, shot uh, at. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, they, they noticed in my password this stamp. Yeah. But I hadn't listed that country. And they were like, well, why which, didn't you list you know, that? And you're like, you won't let me. 
<laughs> and so they said, well, this is a very good thing. We will, we will, I'll take it up with my supervisor to make sure that those people that they said, because at Kashi, she corrected the American to say, we refer to these as locations. Right. So, um, yes, you've been to Western Sahara, even though Morocco said it's theirs. Right. So, so, so right. an example, so they have locations and so they should list Antarctica as location yeah. in case you go there. So, I mean, if it can stand, it should count. So, all right. My yes. other recommendation is BC is re also really well known for its art schools. Um, so I would recommend okay. checking out the local artistry because there's going to be like a lot of newer artists that are in the area because their universities uh, do a lot of pottery. They do a lot of um, very like just traditional arts. Uh, they have like big yeah. old like kilns that are uh, that are like made with clay that are very like traditionally oh, nice. made. So yeah, I've heard in Abbotsford that there's some there's some art. Only stuff you can go and see. In that so if you don't want to get weed, you can probably find a good amount of. I, 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 I would guess that there's probably a decent amount of interesting like hemp artistry. Um, but I, but I, I'm told as well that there there is there is a particular local delicacy which is mm. this, this sort of fish, uh, the salmon that's been been sort of roasted with a honey glaze on it. Oh um, yeah, that's good to to try, um, and and such. Um, but, che but che yeah, know, check I out the local cuisine. I don't know that much about uh, BC cuisine. I could I, I could hit up a friend of mine. He's been there a good number of times. Yeah, to see. But anyway, that that'll be that'll be one of my things is is to go across the border and experience that that bit. And of course, they when when you have your interview, they they talk to you about how to how to talk to customs people, and they say, don't yeah. be chatty, don't be friendly, don't offer information, don't tell us more than we have to know. Um, uh, but so, so for example, they, they, they came and they said, you know, they gave me, they give you, then they quiz you, right? They say, okay, um, let's say you are traveling to Canada and you're going to visit a friend and you want to give them a bottle of wine mm -hmm. and you're coming up to the border. What do you do? And I say, well, prior to that, I fill out my arrive can application yeah. say very good and said, and, and so I come to the station when they ask anything to declare. I say, yes, I have a bottle of wine mm -hmm. and they say, and, and then so they said, okay, um, what do you plan to do with this wine? I'm going to give it to my friend They say wrong. Nope. Now you're importing. You're importing one. Yeah. So, so what you say is I'm, I'm, you said, what you're supposed to say is it's for personal use. Yeah. I said, oh, now, we know what are you going to do with it? Drink it. Drink it. <laughs> <laughs> drink it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's personal use to so drink it. And they said, it doesn't mean you can't be friendly and share it with people. But but importing is different than so you say it's for personal use, right? So when you bring wine back from Canada, because you said you like go there for Canadian wine, what do you tell yep. the person? So, this wine is for my personal use. I'm gonna drink right. it. And and so God. forth. Now they also said they also said be very careful about because there are things that are legal in BC and things legal in the state of Washington, but aren't legal at the border. Right. And mm -hmm. and they said and we have lots of sensing stuff and sniffing stuff. So they said, we recommend you not stuff. use any, any hand creams because yeah. some hand creams have herbal things that might mask as, and therefore yeah. cause it to have to pull you over and do more detailed search. And that wastes our time and makes you unhappy. So, yeah, so don't bring over hand cream. So it was all very, Hilarious. very interesting. All travel tips with Landon. You ever want to go anywhere? You ask Landon. Landon will know the answer. Hey. All right. Let's all get right. out of here, everybody. Like, Thank subscribe, uh, become a member and a Patreon. There's uh, all kinds of good stuff coming down the line. You also get access to stuff early, uh, as well as the Discord. So there's lots of stuff going in there. I think Nikki's freaking out over there right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we will see everybody tomorrow. Have a good day. Happy everybody. Canada Day. Happy Canada Day. Bye. Bye.